Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today's video is going to seem um, like Captain Obvious probably for some of you. We're going to take a quick look over at the uh, uh, bunting uh, boards for uh, Skatersoft. And the Captain Obvious part is when we start talking about how the uh, bunting boards are different than the uh, normal boards. Now, this is one of these uh, things and topics that um, I wanted to talk about in one of these videos where we can approach it a little bit more slowly. Because when it comes to playing the game, I really don't want to take all of the excess time in every video to sit down and explain exactly how how it works and what's different and so on. It would be different if I had the boards like in front of you, but that would mean that the computer game would have to be, you know, created in a different way and it would be really uh, uh, troublesome and all of that to figure out. So we'll go ahead and just take a look on over here um, and see what we can uh, uh, get going. I'll actually take my webcam off here for a second and um, we'll take a uh, look here and see what these boards look like. So um, uh, as you can see here, these are the boards that we're used to, right? This is the stuff that I showed you before. This is uh, results 11 th 1 through 11 uh, with um, all the different situations and stuff like that. Here's 12 through 45. This is actually more like what the actual boards will look like, and you'd have fielding 1, 2, and 3, and everything would be uh, sort of split up like that. Now we'll take a look here, though, at what we're interested in, which is the uh, sacrifice play. My apologies again that the text is so small. There's really not much that I can do about that. Um, again, because of the way that the game is uh, programmed, I can't make it any bigger. You see, when I click on that, it doesn't do anything. I, I don't know, whatever. I, I mean, yeah, <laughs> no, no comment. It would be nice if I could. Um, you can see, though, that when we're calling for a sacrifice in any of these situations, right, those um, uh, play result numbers here at the top mostly will turn into outs with a couple of uh, very interesting, uh, you know, exceptions. But for the most part, what you're doing when you're sacrificing in Skeetersoft is you're saying, I'm willing to give up the possibility of getting a base hit or even an extra base hit because it's really important to me that something happened with this run. And I mean, naturally, I mean, you're not going to come up with like, I don't know, the base is loaded and bunt and hit like a triple, right? I mean, of course, it's not going to happen. Right, so some of these situations, let's see if I find one, runners on a first and third, a number of these are actually bunts where you beat it out. I'm not certain exactly what the uh, rationale is behind that, um, but some of these uh, situations will see more bunts that are successful than others, right? Whereas um, in a situation like with the runner on first, in most of these um, situations, you can see um, you're not going to have a whole lot of success. In fact, with a run around first, just looking at this quickly, I'm trying to think, what is it that you don't want to have happen? Generally, you don't want to have like a 25 take place. You don't want a 23. Anything that's a double play, a 35, you don't want to run into stuff like that because that's, that's not your friend. Um, that will make your life very, very miserable. Now, is that the same everywhere? No. Now, with a run around second, there's not so many um, double play options. A 27 will get you one. Um, and a 37, interesting enough, well, that's a pretty rare roll. Uh, with the runner on third, are there a bunch of double play options? Yeah, 25 gives you a double play as well. Mostly what we would consider to be double play numbers um, end up giving you double plays sometimes. 25 is the most like quintessential double play number. Uh, 23, by the way, is the special role, which we can talk about probably a different time. 23 is a role that is um, for pitchers only. That goes back to national pastime. The 23 has always been a pitcher's only uh, play result number. Um, although I think that you see actual position players in uh, Skatersoft um, who have uh, 23s as well. You can see here runners on a first and second. There's all sorts of uh, double plays that can come up, a 23 and a 24. There's also a triple play possibility with a, a 41, which is a sharp bunt fly to the first baseman, and they caught, catch a runner off of second or first. That's a real rarity. Love to see that happen. I don't think I've ever seen that happen in real life. Um, runners on at first and third, um, you do also have a couple of these. See, again, pop-up bunts that um, end up turning into double plays. Again, a 23 will do that. Runner on first and uh, second and third, again, a 23 gives you some trouble. And then the base is loaded. Um, 23 doesn't give you as much trouble. Actually, it does. Yeah, runners on third and second are out in rundowns. That's um, the pitcher missing the bunt. So interesting stuff. The 16 gives you a triple steal. How about that? But you can see here that um, you know things are a little bit different um, when you have. Uh, uh, sorry about that. Um, when you uh, have uh, uh, the. Uh, 
when you're trying to bunt and trying to figure stuff out. Here we go. Now I'm back. Uh, when you're trying to bunt, you're trying to, uh, you know, push somebody uh, in, like push in a run, or you're trying to push a guy over to second or third or whatever. There's a lot of, like, really precarious and strange things that can happen. The uh, number you really want to watch out for, again, is uh, 23. I believe that Bill probably um, made a lot of double plays on 23 on purpose um, because he knows that 23s go almost exclusively to pitchers. And so there's a little bit of this, um, I don't know, risk-taking. It's almost like a gamble, right? You know, do I really want to bunt in this situation? Right, because you don't want to make it so that, you know, the bunt is always going to be successful, right? Now, I haven't really done the uh, math behind this, but one of the things I've noticed as I've played uh, Skeetersoft over the years um, is that uh, bunting seems to be kind of hard to do. If you're trying to bunt up to a certain level because you know that the team's bunted that much in real life, in Skeetersoft, you're going to have a hard time getting to that level because it'll be something like only 60-something percent of the bunts you attempt are actually successful. In other words, you have to bunt almost twice as much as you think you do to make sure you get enough bunts. Now, that kind of depends on the season, however. That's what my experience was with 1908, and uh, no, I'm sorry, 1900, where there were a lot of errors. Other seasons, there might not be quite as few or, or, or quite as many errors. Now, that's another thing, by the way, to uh, show you here. Um, I'll pull this back down here again for a second, which is that you don't see as many errors here on the uh, so called error numbers. Little e does count again, or does still count for bunts. Um, but uh, there's not as many chances for something to be turned into an air. Um, we'll talk about this later. I think maybe um, tomorrow we'll talk about the little E system and how it works exactly. Um, but uh, there are fewer chances um, with the sacrifice play for a little E to come into play because there's not a whole lot of air results to allow the little E to come into play. So again, we'll talk about that more uh, probably tomorrow. We'll talk a little bit about how the little E system actually works like in a pra as a practical measure and uh, we can sort of figure out where to go from there. There you have it. That's the way that uh, bunts work in uh, Skeetersoft. I'd love to know what you think about it. You think this is good? Think this is bad? Think this is boring? Let me know one way or another down below and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.